African artists themselves. Do you think that they have challenges with funding or with regulations? There's regulation issues, like for instance, collecting publishing revenue on the continent is like, it's a joke, right? Because like for you to be able to collect publishing revenue, you need the government to enforce the laws for the radio stations to pay you publishing royalties on the music they play for the bars to be able to pay for what they play, like for the use of your music. And in a lot of African countries, these laws are there, but there's no enforcement because people still look at the creative sector as a joke. The orange economy is like, ah, that's not really business. That's just young people with dreadlocks just singing and dancing and jumping across the world. Yes, they hear the music everywhere. Yes, now things are getting better because they're seeing things at the Grammys, the same Bonner Boy, you know, and Whiskey doing Madison Square Garden. But there's not a lot of education for them to really understand the business of music or creativity. I once got on a panel with a financial institution. They have a fund, a $500 million fund for investing in creatives. And the person said, oh, it is impossible to protect music IP. It is difficult to protect music IP. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? Like, are you kidding me? There's Shazam technology. Every song has an ISRC code. It will pick it up instantly. When you have a situation where you have an institution that has up to a billion to invest in creatives, but you're having the key stakeholders confidently and saying it's impossible to protect the IP. That just shows you where it's at. That's why there needs to be more education to let people realize that this is a business. There's revenue to be earned, not just live revenue, like streaming revenue, publishing revenue, especially now that the world is looking to Africa.